So if you don't have a, or if you took concurrent enrollment from Weber State prior, go to weber.edu, click on the little icon, it's supposed to be a picture of a person. And obviously with the winds have canceled, everything from Davis County North is canceled. It's gonna take you to this screen, okay? Now, what that's gonna do is you can get your WeberCat username here as well. And it, if you forgot your password, take you to where you can reset that, okay? So you can do that through this page as well, uh, if you're working through that. But mostly you'll be at step two and that will set you up. Make sure you don't forget your password. It has to be 16 characters long. That's a long password. It has to have numbers, letters, and special characters. So like the dollar sign, the percentage sign, things like that, okay? Once you get all that, then you then go right to register for courses. That's step three. That up. You would log in. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. I'm not gonna register for class. I did that two years ago and surprised myself. You have to sign the student agreement that you've read everything and that you'll abide by all those dates and everything that's involved. Uh, your permit parents need to fill this portion out. You can fill it out for them, but they do need to have your parents' names, contact, email, uh, just like registering for school, okay? And then you submit those agreements. Now, it's not let me go on because I'm not gonna fill that out, uh, but that's gonna take you to where you can then register for the courses. And if you get lost and you're not quite sure what's going on, and most of you found these out already. Let me just back up here a little bit. If you watch these videos, these instructions, they'll take you right through it. So if you're gonna register for the class, this is where you pay the $5 of credit and that'll take you into where you wanna go. Um, so for instance, registering for a course is what you wanna do there. And that'll be right here at this point. And there'll be a little video there that will come up and help you work through that. You wanna make sure that, so hopefully if you have any problems, again, if you have problems, give me a call uh, or send me an email and a phone number and I'll call you back and walk you through it. That's probably the easiest way to do that is to get you through there. Um, so hopefully that works, okay? Uh, we've got about a week to get you registered in the courses. So you don't wanna delay on that. You wanna get them in there and make sure you have um, all that. Any questions on concurrent enrollment? So this is where we left off last time. We had brought in your AutoCAD plan and that was that's the grade I was talking about is this AutoCAD layout that you see in red. Okay, so when we brought our house in, we did all of this exterior wall around the entire thing. Today, what I want to do is get to be a little more fine-tuned about what we're doing here. So for a few minutes, I'm gonna talk just to the Architectural 3 students while you guys are opening up your files and seeing where you're at. And again, if you would mind muting your mics, it would help a little bit with the background noise. So if you're doing commercial Architecture 3 and you have selected your um, property to remodel, you're going to need to go into the drawings and find the structural sheet. So this is a structural sheet for the ALT project. This is a warehouse, office space warehouse. And what you need to look for is items like this little call out, for example, more specifically this one. So this is a detail call out that references what the wall is made from. So I need to find one on detail one on sheet A5. Well, this is sheet A3, um, so I'd have to open up that sheet, but there's information here that will qualify. So what I'm going to do is look at what the walls are made of, at least get you started on what that looks like. And, and so what we're looking at on this one is here's an exterior wall. It tells me it's a CMU wall with jip board over furring strips, okay? So let me explain what that means. So this wall is an eight inch wide wall. If I did a distance on there to measure it, you could do that as well. So I come across and it's two feet wide, but the scale is at three quarters of an inch. So if I take the tw 24 inches and divide it by three, 
That'll get me to the eight inch wide brick. Then I've got a furring strip and furring strips are an eighth of an inch. Sorry, the furring strips are an inch and a half. So it's basically a two by four on end there. And then gypsum board. So that is the wall that would be for the alt project. Each of those projects has a different system of how the wall is built. And we need to rebuild that wall, okay? And that's what we're then do first is um, for this one. Now, if you've got another um, project and you want some help with building that wall, um, you'd have to, I can't open up all four projects at once, but I'm gonna go ahead and build this wall right now. And um, if you're doing print tech, it's a, a similar wall system. You could redo the pottery model to add this furring strip so you can paint the walls. Uh, print tech's warehouse space is just CMU. So we don't have the furring strip or the gypsum board. The Holiday Inn is wood frame construction and the bank is wood frame construction. So those are the three different styles there that we're using. Okay, so what I wanna do is build this wall. Um, interior walls are the same for all the projects and we call those interior par partition walls. They're typically made up of a two by four with um, gypsum board on each side. Residentially, for those who do in houses, it's a half inch. If you're commercial architecture three students, yours is five eighths of an inch thick. Now what that does, that difference of going from a half inch to five eighths, that one eighth of an inch difference changes the wall bearing time, burning time from a 30 minute wall to an hour. So when you put five eighths gypsum board on your wall, it's gonna take a fire an hour to burn through that. Um, that's on relative, so on, on the average fire. So we have to keep that in mind. Um, for the residential students, one and two, architecture one and two, you'll be doing five eighths gyp board on your garage and typically around the stairs as well. But, so we'll get to that. All right, any questions from architecture three students right now? No? Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this um, file right here, this AutoCAD file, if I can get a hold of it, it's stuck behind my... All right, so here's how we're gonna build the wall. Architecture three students, we're gonna build a wall we're gonna, and um, commercial, um, architecture one and two, yours will be similar. So I want you to pay attention to what we're doing because we'll build your walls next, uh, depending on what you wanna do with it. So I'm gonna go to the architectural tab, I'm in Revit. I'm in a thing. Okay, if you notice, my entire ribbon just shrank. It condensed and became very small. Um, this is great if you're working on a small device. It's hard to teach with that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna move my screen around a little bit. This is something you all are going to do by accident. So I need to show you how to fix it. And so I'm gonna get on the screen a little bit better so I can see it and move around um, the participation. So when your ribbon is condensed like this, everything you wanna do is in there. It's just not easy to select. So if you go up to the tabs across the top and you go all the way to the end, you're gonna see a little toggle. It says minimize to panel tiles. If you just toggle that, they'll go completely away they'll be gone and they'll come back. So it's, it's, it really is just a toggle of getting them to which one you like to work with and what works in your comfort zone. But it, you just literally just click on it and they toggle out, okay? So hopefully that's helpful to a few of you when you lose that ribbon. It'll happen to all of you at some point. Just go to the top row, scroll all the way across and you can then um, go ahead and, and do that. Um, can you open my, my mic? You mean, yes. you mean me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna build a wall. So I click on the walls, and then I'm gonna get my options and show up here in my properties box, okay? And there's quite a few in here for you to start with. And since I'm doing the alt building wall, I wanna look and see where my masonry walls are. So I'm gonna find something like a generic eight inch masonry wall. That's pretty much 
a good starting point because I'm gonna to add to that. Um, for you um, residential students, you will probably not use this wall, but since we're building templates as we go, you will use it in uh, when you take architecture three uh, and we want to have you use the same template from each year because the more you use your template file, the more um, it has in there to make it work for you. So I'd like you all to go through this process and then build a couple walls to start. That way you won't be bored and bored hands do bad things. So click on generic eight inch masonry wall. Don't draw anything, just have that in your properties window. Okay, questions, any questions on that? Again, feel free to use the chat room. Um, you can stick your hand up, you know. It's kind of hard to see with this many people when you raise the hand, so if I miss you, I apologize. It's a little easier if you use the chat room. I'll get a notice on that. There's, there's about 32 of you in the class right now. All right, once we have a wall selected, if you look at the next one, it says new wall, which is where we want it, it's new walls. Even though you are doing remodel, you then treat them as new walls until we get to where we do demolition. Um, once you hit edit type, so class, if you'll all select edit type, it's gonna bring up a window that's pretty um, boring, okay? So the first thing we want to do is go down to the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, there's a word preview. Go ahead and click on the preview and it will show you what this wall is. So right now, this is the wall in floor plan view. If you look in the bottom right corner of that preview window, there's a little area where it says floor plan. You can change that to section view and that's what your wall looks like in a section view. So it's pretty, pretty boring. It doesn't really give you a lot of information, but it's just the generic wall, okay? So from here, we're going to change everything about this wall. And you really want to follow these steps anytime you change any component in Revit. And um, so here we go. When the eight inch mystery wall, before I do any editing to anything, you want to duplicate it. I'm gonna say that again, it's really important. Before you edit anything, you need to duplicate it first. So that's what I'm gonna hit duplicate. At this point, I'm gonna give it a new name. So I'm gonna take out the word generic because it's an eight inch masonry wall and it's gonna be with um, two by furring um, with chipboard. So I'm gonna, those are abbreviations. So uh, two by means a two by four, two by six, two by eight, whatever two by that is. Um, gyp and board is gypsum board. We don't abbreviate sheetrock or drywall. So typically we'll refer to it as the main ingredient that's used, that's gypsum and it's made into a board. So gyp and board are the abbreviations for gypsum board or sheetrock. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make that name and then just hit okay. Okay, so now I've got a new wall in the family of basic walls and that's good. So now I'm gonna look at the parameters and the next thing I'm gonna work with is structure. Anybody having problems with the renaming? We're all good. Okay, so once you get that renamed, come down to where it says structure and hit the edit button to the right of that. All right, here is where we're gonna have some fun. Okay, everything to the top is towards the outside. Everything towards the bottom is the inside. And right now we've got a 20 foot tall wall. That wall can be varied and changed. I usually leave them at 20 feet um, as I start. But we're gonna start to build this, um, this uh, wall that we're building here. Okay, so I have a concrete masonry unit. That means it's across the width is seven and five eighths. And I'm good with that. That's what they are. Um, so I'm gonna leave that material alone. But I'm gonna work on my outs, my inside because the outside is just gonna be plain, old, plain CMU wall. 
Now that can be covered for you guys doing commercial. If you don't want concrete block showing, you can put on a layer of rigid insulation and stucco over that. And I'll show you that as we get to the end, if that's something you wanna to do to your building. So we're gonna build the inside first so we match the existing structure. And then we can change that for the new remodel that you're doing. So I'm gonna add uh, underneath the core boundary. And the boundary is just the edges. Think of those as lines like we did in AutoCAD that show the boundary of the wall. They're the edges. So I'm gonna insert a new edge and it's gonna default up inside. Once it gets in there, you wanna move it down till it's below the boundary of the concrete masonry unit. So structure means it's gonna hold up the weight of the building. And in, in the commercial case, the block is what's holding the building. What I want is a, basically it's a, an aesthetic treatment, some fur strips in there that will allow me to paint walls and to hang pictures and shelves and things along those lines. So the next structure, if I click in structure one, down below here, and then the down arrow, it's gonna give me some, uh, some options. There's a substrate, a thermal layer, a finish one, finish two, and a membrane. Okay, so let's define those. A thermal air area is a gap between the wood okay. and masonry. Yes. Oh, question. Yes. Students, even in the classroom, do you allow food in the classroom? Please allow, take him yes, to yes. He's not wearing his mask. Is that Lucas? Um, have him just step out in the hall to eat and watch the window. Uh-huh, okay. You have yeah. to stay out in the hall and watch the window? No. Stay out in the hall and watch the window. Yeah, Lucas, you'll have to step out in the hall to eat. Go ahead, in the hall. And, and if he wants to leave the door propped open, as long as he's distancing, then he can at least uh -huh. hear what's happening. And he can watch the video a little later. Listen, I'll listen. I'll okay. All right. So as I say, we've got these different areas here. Um, a substrate is not structurally there, but it's, it's there to hold things together. So if I was to do um, like a shelf, I would maybe have a bracket underneath that to help support the weight of the shelf, but it really isn't the structural loading of the shelf. Uh, and that's what we're going to create. So we're gonna do a substrate there. Uh, the paint layers are there as well, as we looked at. So you have paint one and two. You wanna keep those separate. So one's an exterior, one's an interior. Um, there really aren't any difference between the two. It's just for you to keep track of things. And membrane layers um, are like Tyvek, house wrap, um, plastic wrap, things along those lines. Okay, so I got a substrate. I need to change the category next. So I've got this little furring strip and the category on that, let's take a look what we've got to work here. We click the three little dots and it's gonna take us into the materials that are available within Revit. And not all of my previews are showing, which is odd, but it might be the day. <laughs> so I'm gonna scroll down till I get to lumber Hopefully, find lumber, metal furring, metal stud. This was all here last night, so I'm kind of a little concerned. Where it is wood, dimensional wood lumber, right here. So I'm going to scroll all the way down to wood to find dimensional lumber. My furring strips are made out of one by twos, is what they're made from typically, but they could be a two by four, um, but because we're just going to lay them on their opposite end of what we would for a stud wall. So I want dimensional lumber. Um, and then the rest of this is talking about size or color and stuff. Don't miss with the colors just yet. Just go ahead and make sure we pick dimensional lumber and then hit okay. And it's asking for a profile. We don't need the profile right now. So just hit okay there as well. Not once the thickness of what this will be. So we're gonna change that second zero to one and a half, 1.5 inches. 
Okay. And we have that to then wrap around the whole system. Okay, we're gonna add one more layer. So then do another insert. And this one needs to go below the wood. So again, you have to move them down. This is going to be, um, you could call it a finish if you want. Uh, I'll call it finish two since it's on the inside. Um, I'm gonna change the category. Again, same thing. I'm gonna look for gypsum board. So I'm gonna go up to the G's, everything's, there it is. Gypsum wall board, everything in here is alphabetical. Uh, you should see previews on yours. I'm not sure exactly why I'm not today. They were all here last night. So click on to that. Um, that doesn't matter right now. So let's do vid, uh, gypsum board, I hit okay. Let that load, it takes it a minute. And then I'm not worried about the profile right now. And I'm gonna change the thickness. If it's residential, it'd be half inch. This is gonna be commercial. So it's gonna be five eighths. So put five eighths of an inch in there. And I'm gonna switch my preview back to plan view. And so you can see what we've done. So here's the outside is at the top. There's my brick, my concrete block. Then I have my furring strip and then my gypsum board. So we've now modified this wall and given it characteristics. So we hit okay. And we hit okay, because we're all done making a wall. And now this wall can be used for the commercial, at least those that are doing the alt and probably, yeah, the alt and the warehouse, um, the um, print tech. Those both have the same wall system. So you could go around and use that for your premier walls. Okay, so hopefully that helps the commercial students a little bit so that they feel a little bit not neglected. Okay, now for the residential side and for those doing the hotel and the bank, the next wall we're gonna make is a, is a more of a wood frame system. So we can use residential construction for commercial. And for those of you that go on to Weber State to finish that degree, um, that's the certification they give is, is what's called lightweight commercial work, which means we're using wood and very little steel and concrete. If you go up to the U or to UVU, that'd be more in the heavier structural materials for those degrees. Okay, so we're gonna make another new wall and this one's gonna be for our residents. Um, the wall I have here, if I select it, it will tell me I've got a basic wall. It's brick and wood stud, not a lot of pizzazz to it. Um, so what I'm gonna do, cause that wall is created, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the, how it's created first. And then I'm gonna show you how to make a, a different type of wall. So if I go select the wall off my plan and I hit edit type, I can go right to the structure and I can see everything that's involved in building this. So I've got um, my brick, then I've got an air barrier, then I've got another membrane layer. Now membrane layers are always zero because they're only 5.5 uh, millimeters thick, very, very thin plastics. So your membranes will always be zero, but you need to show it because Revit will calculate how much of it you need. So when you order it, you have enough. Then I have my substrate for my sheathing and I'm looking at my sheathing is only a half inch. If I did half inch sheathing um, in my structure today with the amount of winds we're having, um, we've got 95 mile an hour winds in Davis and Weber County this morning. The U of U reached 98 miles an hour this morning, which is why those places are closing down. Um, this house would blow apart, literally. Um, so what I want to do is on this wall here, I'm gonna up this to five eighths for my sheathing. It's not a huge difference, but it is enough to add a little bit extra strength to my wall. So I'm editing the wall that I'm using. This is usually what I use when I design a building. Um, half inch is the minimum code requires, but I like a little bit stronger wall. I just, 
the world's changing, so I've got to change with it. Then I have my boundary for the core. The core is the stud, where the structure is. That's going to be a two by six. I can tell because this is a five and a half inch. Code requires another membrane on the inside of the house for condensation and then my gypsum board. So that's how you can edit. So I'm just going to hit OK and modify that. Since I've already, I drew this um, last time. But seeing that you can edit and change, I did not do a duplicate here. I edited a wall and I edited it to my standard. I, I never use half inch sheathing. Um, so this is a permanent edit, not a new wall. Okay, so you can understand the difference there. Hit apply and hit okay. So these walls, all of them just changed. Now what I wanna do is I need a stucco wall. Um, how many are, uh, just by, maybe you can kinda of let me know if you're doing a stucco wall. Where you do, it's a, it's, stucco is still a masonry product. It's still put on as a grout type material. Any, is anybody doing stucco? And if you need to unmute, you can to let me know, that'd be fine. No stucco. How many are doing siding? Anybody doing siding on your house? And commercial people, you can do stucco. That's pretty common um, on commercial. Uh, we can also do siding on commercial, not getting a lot of feedback. Okay, so y'all just uh, there, okay. Um, so is everybody doing brick on your houses? I don't think so. People in the chat said they're doing siding. Okay, my chat is missing completely. Where's my chat? Where's my chat? Yay. That's kind of weird. I don't have a chat room. Huh. Yeah, I think Revit's affected my, I'm not seeing my chat room for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. Let me just see if I can find, it's behind my program. That's not good. Sorry about that, folks. I um, my bad. I didn't know it was sticking behind, and I don't. I don't think I can get in front of. Uh, there it is. Okay, got some siding. Um, okay, sorry. I lost my husband on Revit. It's not letting me open the file wood stained. Um, Adrian, where did you save your file at? Oh, so sorry, I didn't know there's all this going on here. Okay, thank you for helping out with the mics. You've lost your, okay, someone's lost their project browser over on the side. All right, let me show you how to fix that because that's a pretty common thing. Um, what you want to do, and I've got to see if I can move my, um, move my screen here, my buttons to the bottom here. All right, if you have lost the browser down below here or the properties, you can come over to your view tab. Then what you want to do is go to user interface and make sure that project browser and properties are both checked. That'd be the first place to look at there. Okay, let's see if that brings it back. I'm going to try and get my chat room back now. Maybe. So every time I move, um, Rev it around, it's gonna move on me. And let's see. Let 
me see if I can find that chat room again. There it is. Sorry about this. I'm trying to make it as easy as I can for everybody. All right, so that's Project Browser. Um, masonry can be used for interior or exterior. It's predominantly an exterior tool. So most commercial buildings are done with, um, with uh, concrete masonry units, and then they will either paint over it or they will stucco over it so that it is um, aesthetically pleasing to look at. Try and move this without losing it, but it's not going to be easy. Um, let's see what else I can figure here. What has happened the last time I can do anything because of it? Okay, um, you have to make sure you don't shut Revit down before it's finished saving. Your drawing files are almost a gig in size right now with just the walls we have. So if you are shutting down or you're saving your file and then you immediately close Revit, it won't save your work. You've got to give it time to save your projects. Um, if you've lost your files, you will probably have to redraw them. Um, Um, Will, you asked how do I pull up that screen. I'm not sure what screen you're talking about. Are you talking about editing the, the wall types? Wow, you guys are busy, busy. Okay, Adriana, if your house is an opening, it didn't save properly. And so you'll have to redo that. Okay, I'm gonna close this for a minute and get things back to where we can do our next piece. There we go. All right, so I need to make a, a residential wall and it looks like the majority of the students that are in the chat room have said they're doing siding. Okay, so I need to create a siding wall. So I'm going to architecture tab, click on the wall. That went too far. And then I'm going to go and see if there's one already built that I can use. So I'm going to click on the button and then scroll down through and see what I have. And you'll find that there's quite a few in here already. So I have a wood shingle on a wood stud. Mm -hmm. Those are cedar shake shingles and they're primarily done up in the soffit area of the roof. And so that wouldn't apply for right now. Wood shingle over wood siding, mm, not gonna apply. Wood siding on wood stud, that one does apply for shingles. So let's click on that wall and then we're gonna hit edit type and see what the construction of it is. And I've lost my chat room again. Good crap. Pretty sure you got questions and I've lost you all. There it is. Okay. Okay, Adriana, you then have to go back and reinsert the AutoCAD file and then trace the exterior walls off again. Hopefully that you did that. Okay. All right, so I look at my wall here. Siding's on the top, that's the outside. Gypsum board's on the inside with um, sheathing, plywood, that wraps the house here in the middle. If I look at the structure, I can see what things I might want to change. So I've got plywood sheathing, and I've got clapboard. So this is clapboard siding. You can change your siding out to what you would like. If we go into the materials, Right now, that's the only one I've loaded in here for you. So when we get to the end, if you want to do something other than a wood sided house, we then need to load in and create uh, aluminum siding or um, shiplap. If you want to do clapboard, you can do shiplap. Um, so we will do that. 
when we get our house done as we start doing our style changes. So if you're just doing, you're not sure what color you want or what style, just go ahead and go with the clapboard for right now and it will give you the right symbology for it. But there are some things we can change on this now, um, if you'd like. And one of them is the pattern. Right now it's a six inch parallel. That means there's six inches of exposed siding. We can change that to um, one of the other symbologies here, if you'd like. You can go with wood board, you can go wide wood board. Those are both uh, user friendly to use on there. Um, and that just changes the overall look on the outside of your house. Uh, if you're not sure exactly which way you wanna go, then don't change it for right now. But right now, these are your types that you'd use. And it just shows um, on lines on the exterior of your house, okay? So right now, six inch is a standard um, style for siding. But if you wanna change that to more of a wood look for those who are doing varnished wood, for example, varnished wood would be wood board wide or wood board. So there's a wide one and a narrow one. Either of those you could use for the stained wood siding on there. Okay. All right, let's see if we have any. So I'm gonna hit okay on that. And I think we're ready to get to where maybe we can um, start to create our interior walls. Okay, so that's, that's just basic wall creation. Um, but you, as you go in and you use a wall, take a minute, look at the structure of how it's built. What's going on in there to make it all work. Make sure we got our membranes for a Tyvek or house wrap. Make sure we got our right size lumber. This is two by six. We've got our vapor retarder, our gypsum board. We wanna make sure we have all these set up. And so we're good to go. Let me go and close out of this. So we can get in that chat room to come back up. I'm not sure. It's over here. And I'm gonna do a little adjustment of my room size so I can see a chat room a little bit. So I'm gonna improvise Zoom and make it a little more friendly for me because this chat board doesn't stick up front. Okay, I think we got all those questions answered. All right, so I get my wall on there. I'm gonna zoom up on my wall and I notice it's two lines. It looks just like what I did in AutoCAD. And I'd really like to be able to see the elements more. So if you guys would go down to your lower left-hand part of your screen, you'll find that it says a scale, one quarter inch equals a foot down the lower left corner. Then there's a gray box. And if you click on that gray box, you have coarse, medium, and fine. If you'll click on fine, the details of what makes up your wall will show. So you can see inside, outside, you know where your sheathing is, you know where your vapor barrier is, you know where your gypsum board is. So you can see all that detail inside of there. And that's on the fine setting. If I go to medium, um, it doesn't change it a whole lot. Medium and fine are pretty close. Course, and then get just two basic lines. So feel free to increase your viewability so that you can see kind of what's going on with your walls. It'll help you a little bit. Okay, now on this wall, I've got some mistakes. And so I'm gonna talk about that real quick. Because as you go through now and you get ready to do all your walls and get them all set up, you're gonna find that you have a few things that didn't quite go right. And let's see if we can fix that. So this room right here, there's my wall that's for the door. I've already got a corner there. I know, that's why I know there's a mistake here. This room is supposed to be a 12 foot by 12 foot room. And I can pretty well tell that it's not because things aren't lined up well. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go to my, in this case, I'm gonna go to my modify tab, clear at the end. It's a little compressed because I shortened my screen. And in there, they use the measure tool. And I'm gonna not save my project right now. There's a measure from one side to the next. 
and I find that I'm only at 11 foot 6 and 7 16 So my room is considerably smaller than what I need it to be for my purposes. So I'm going to start fixing my walls, okay? And this is the one that I know I have to fix, and then I'm going to put my interior walls in. So I want to show you to fix your wall. It's not super complicated. There's a couple of things we can do with that. So the first one is to use the align tool. Uh, the hotkey for that is AL. And now kick you into the align tool. Um, what you want to do first is select the destination. Well, I want that wall to line up with where it was supposed to be, this wall. And right now it's lining up right down the center of the wall itself. So I click on that, nice little red line there. And then I choose the edge and I'm going, uh-oh. When I go to the edge of my wall, it's not selecting it. It's grabbing the middle point of that wall. So I need to do a few changes here so that I have full control over where my walls are lining up, okay? So let's go through and then do a couple of looks and see what we can change. So I'm gonna escape out of my command and I'm gonna go into manage, the manage tab. And we're gonna spend a little bit of time here today. Okay, so um, we, we use this area quite a bit, more so second quarter when we start putting your materials on, we use all of this, which is really kind of nice. Um, first thing I want you to do is find the snaps. These are like the O snaps in AutoCAD. It's a, horse, uh, a horseshoe magnet. So go and click on that. And it's gonna bring up um, all of my O snaps that I have. And so I wanna just kind of go through and um, they're on by default. And I look through what my settings are. So right now lengths are at every four foot, six inches, one inch and quarter inch. And that's, that key, that's fine to leave it that way. Angles are 90, 45, 15, five and one. So I'm okay with that. All of my O snaps are set, endpoints, midpoints, nearest, work planes, quadrants. And in Revit, I'm okay with that too, um, because it's a little bit easier to toggle through them than it is in AutoCAD. So I usually just let them, let them go, and I'm, I'm okay with that. So it's not an O snap area. So I'm, it's not a problem with that I can't select it because everything's turned on. So there's another problem I need to, I, to find. Now, when we do problem solving, I usually will set up my drawings so that we have to um, kind of deduce what that problem is. That way, you know how to find your own problem there. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK. And let's take a look at what else I've got here. I've got project parameters. And I've got down here, I've got project information. Those seem to be the same thing. So let's kind of go with... Um, Let's start with project information. When I open up project information, you will need to fill this out at some point before we start going and putting sheets together. So your organizational name, that's your company name. And you're gonna need to come up with a fictional company name for right now. Uh, I can tell you right now, the, the fictional name I chose in college became the name of my company in real life. And so, Think carefully about what you do. You might have a really good one. What kind of uh, organization are you? I am a designer, I am not an architect. So I can design homes up to 3,000 square foot finished, but I can do unlimited unfinished square footage. So it works out pretty good that way. The name of the building. If you're doing houses, maybe it's a name, maybe it's a client's name, maybe it's um, like in the case of a Holiday Inn or alt or the name of the company would go there. Yes. Is that a question? Hmm. Okay, I thought someone had a question. Um, the author is who's doing the drawing, who's the designer? That'd be your name would go there. Now, uh, we look at this, there's a lot of issues there uh, that we can look at. We can put in energy savings amounts. We can put in the issue date. How is the project um, being done as we draw it? So the um, Vivid Arena, downtown Salt Lake, 
the drawings were being done as the building was being built. And literally they were a day ahead with the drawings. It was kind of a fun project. The project's address, project's name, project number. Project numbers are how you catalog. We'll talk about how to do this. So that's one thing to look at that we're gonna do. If you know any of this you wanna fill out now, you're welcome to do that. It can always be changed, okay. Um, the other one up here that's like it is project parameters. Very similar, but this is what we're gonna be using for detailing. So our elements that we add to the project to help us understand how it's being built. Right now, what you have in yours are things like ceiling heights, um, the head of doors and windows, jams, how wide a door is. These will prop, propag propagate as we go. You can add others in, but for right now, we're gonna let just build itself. So these are what holds the size of your space together. So we're good with there. I want you to look at this guy, it's object styles. Okay, object styles give you everything about how it's gonna look on your screen. So right now we're doing walls. So if I scroll down to walls, way down to walls, right now my walls gonna be a black line and it's gonna be solid. Well, they don't have to be black, okay? If you wanna click on the black square of walls, you can bring up your color box and you can change them. So they're a color that you would rather have and um, you can use either the chart, you can use the um, mix color, or you can go into the panatones, and this will also give you the code color for what they'll want those to be. Any of those are fine. It's not a big deal for me which ones you choose. Um, I personally um, rather just, I just usually pick standards. So if I want a red wall, I can hit that. I then hit okay. I apply that, now my wall outlines are red. Now the problem with doing that is my AutoCAD walls were red. So seeing the difference can be a little tricky there. So I may want to change those just to make it so that I can keep the difference of what's 2D and what's 3D. And again, you can pick whichever one you want there. Just make sure you apply it and then you can hit okay. So that you can see the difference. That's another thing to help you get keep from getting eye strain. All right, let's go down to the next one, which is share parameters. These are things that are shared. Um, if you're if we were to link your files together, and like the shared libraries that had you not download, if you share things together, that means you're using the same um, libraries, and so you're using them by multiple people. So you don't reproduce all of that. Um, and that's what this area is, is uh, here's a, here's a, this is the library room book is a library that we have access to. And so we're not gonna mess with this one. We're not gonna do that. One, um, it gets us into some issues when we share things. Um, but I'll show you how to do some of that with the cloud that's a little safer to do than to share them um, through an internet. You never wanna share directly through an internet. You always wanna go through some kind of firewall um, either Autodesk Cloud or a server, some way that you can keep it yours, okay? Pair parameters, we got next one, global. We're gonna skip global. Um, let's go to project units real quick. That's when they come up. We need to probably adjust those. So units are just like when we all started AutoCAD. The first thing I had to do is type in units and get it set. Since Reva is an architectural program. Your units are pretty well good to go from the start, but you might want to fine tune them just a little bit. And they're all done by the type of unit you're using. So if I worry about length, which is what we're doing right now with wall sizes, and I click there, right now I'm set to the nearest 132nd of an inch, which is fine. You can leave it that way. Um, but if you're a little, um, more of the drag and drop type kid or designer, you can go to the nearest half inch, and just like we did in AutoCAD, and that will help you. But keep in mind, if we get down to working on moving um, things like electrical wiring and stuff that needs to move smaller than that, you'll have to come in and change this so you can move those smaller elements. 
but while you're doing walls that are bulky and big, half inch is great, but you need to know that you can come in here and change it again um, anytime you'd like. I always suppress the zero feet so it fits in dimensions better. Um, that one's just a, an always thing to do. Uh, makes it a little easier that way. And um, that's the only two sayings I would do here in the formatting of the size. Same would occur if you're doing angles. Um, right now you're in degrees, which you can switch it to degrees, minutes, and seconds for doing site work. We'll do this um, at a later date when I give you your site plans. Okay, so we hit OK there. Okay, this doesn't solve the problem I asked. So I need to look at what else can I do to make sure I can get this edge to this. So let's go into um, our wrench settings again. And we looked at last time our temporary dimensions. So I'm gonna click on that just as a reminder so you can see that. Again, because I want things lined up by the face of the wall, I make it on faces. And because I want doors and windows by opening so I can do my spacing, I want those on opening size. So that's where my temporary dimensions are set. And what I want to look at real quick, so we can we'll set the sun later. Um, literally, you'll make the sun set. It's kind of cool. Um, I'm not seeing the setting that I want to change right here. So I think we're good. Yep. Okay. Let's do that object um, match again back into modify. And when I click on my alignment tool, oh, I'm going to find one other thing. So once you get your alignment tool set, let's look at this top bar here. So underneath my ribbon, I have multiple alignments. I could check that. And right now it's set to only align center of walls. So if I change that to wall faces, so it matches what I did in my temporary dimensions. Now when I select this line, now I can get this edge of this wall here. And let's see if I can get those to now line up. Get that to grab. And again, sometimes it, why is it not doing that? Turn that moth off. I probably should have turned that on. So it still wants that mid. Let me um, zoom out and do a refresh real quick here. And give that another go. Sometimes I get stuck. There it is. There we go. So sometimes you have to just zoom in and out to refresh your screen. Um, if it's been kind of running for a little bit, you might have a little Gitch. But now I've got this all lined up here with my original drawing. And so I feel confident now that my size is good, but I'll run a quick verify on that. Boom, 12 feet and perfect. Life's good. I've gone through some settings. I now know look to the one to do my align tool to make sure I've got it on what I want to be aligned. Um, you may turn on multiple later. Um, it may help you with some other things, but that gets me on those face edges is typically what I want. Okay, let's do interior walls, folks. Uh, let's see, we're at 1020. Okay, any, let me jump into the, don't see any new chats. Okay, this will go fast. And then do this whole thing. So we go architecture, walls, um, wall, uh, and I get my walls come up. Now, for um, the only difference between commercial and residential is what the walls are made of. So let's take a look. We got interior wall lines. And again, these are typically um, done with um, alphabetical order. So I've got down in here, I've got a interior four and a half inch partition and an interior four and three quarter inch partition. So the difference between these two wall types for you guys, the one hour rating is the commercial wall. And the difference is the thickness of the gypsum board. We're going from half inch to five eighths. We use five eighths all through commercial. So architecture three students will be using the four and three quarter. Architecture one and two, you'll be doing the four and a half for your walls. And that's the big thing. So I'm just gonna click on the wall type I want 
and I'm looking at my height, and my height right now is eight feet. And that's because we set our exterior walls to nine. I want my interior walls to be about a foot below that always. Now again, that's just a starting point. We will change these most definitely, but it keeps it within the realm that I can see what's going on there, okay? Um, so I've got my height set. It's gonna be unconnected still because I, I don't want to tie them together. I don't connect anything in Revit until the very end. And even then, sometimes I don't. I do need to connect it if I'm going to 3D print the building. If they're not connected, they won't be connected when you 3D print them. And it will literally just fall apart and you'll be gluing everything together. It's a real pain in the neck. Okay, so I'm gonna draw this by face of, ex uh, yeah, face of exterior. Doesn't matter which one that is because it's interior walls. I just kicked out of myself, that's great. Okay, so when I come in here, I wanna follow this wall up. If I start drawing, notice my wall is on the wrong side, okay? It's the right size, it's just the wrong direction. Space bar flips it over and I can take it right to where I need it to go. And if I want, I can even draw the next one on there. Okay, so I'm just changing the red to yellow and um, the yellow is kind of hard to see. I'm gonna change that back to black um, while you guys are start doing, just start tracing your walls with your partition wall. And if you're going and it's not in the direction you want, space bar flips it over so that you can see it. Now, while you're doing that, I'm just gonna go back into my manage and then change my wall properties real quick to see if I can't wrong one. Uh, change those to where it's a little easier to see on your screens. Um, is it working better to have um, zoom on your screens? Is that helping? Does that help you see things a little better? Did I lose the whole class? Wow. Um, can you guys hear me even? Yes. Okay. All right. Somebody replied in the chat. Okay. Good. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. So we're just going to trace these walls off. It should go pretty quick. If you did your AutoCAD drawing, um, correctly, you're just pulling these lines and they will close and clean up for you. You don't even have to do fillets. Isn't that nice? You can just draw till you're done drawing. Now I'm gonna show you how to do where I came up and turned the corner on this wall. I don't wanna have two wall pieces. I want my walls to be as one piece as possible. The fewer pieces you have, the better. So if I use my modify tool and I select the wall over here that I drew, there's a little blue dot. That is your grip. We looked at grips in AutoCAD and they're really, really handy in Revit. So if I just left click on that grip and drag it over, I can strengthen, lengthen out, sorry, lengthen out a wall so that it connects that all one wall piece. So if you can make your walls as contiguous as possible, it'll make um, better results for you at the end. Um, one problem with this though, now I'm thinking about that, is if you put paint on this wall, then that paint color is gonna go the whole way. There is a fix for that. So you don't have to change that uh, because I want my structure to be as it is. When they build this house, this wall will all be built as one wall and then they'll put it into place. So I really try and do my drawing the way it's gonna be built. It just helps find mistakes that a contractor might and to have. If I can avoid that, it's all the better. So I usually go as far up as I can. And while you're in your wall command, you can just, you know, if you click out, you can right click, you can repeat uh, walls in there. 
maybe. Unless you click the wrong thing, then you go crazy. Architecture wall. And it'll be kept here. So you can go through, do all your vertical walls. You can do all your horizontals. Whatever works good for you um, is fine. And because there's columns on my house where these are, I'm just extend that over all the way. I'm not gonna do the columns today. I'm just doing all of my interior walls. And, and hopefully we'll get to doors, kind of what our time does here. I'm not gonna do this wall right here. That's a plumbing wall. I'm gonna take that all the way over there. this one flip it over the nice thing about interior partition walls is they're symmetrical on both sides I don't have to worry about brick being on one side I don't have to worry about stucco on one you know I can just go with it and worry about color later uh, let's do this little this little guy is kind of a pain in the neck for me it's this little plumbing chase uh, a plumbing chase again is so you can get all your uh, piping in there. In this case, I've got a tub on one side and a shower on the other. And the plumbing for those, that's two tubs basically. It's a lot of plumbing to fit in there. It's probably more than I need, but and I'll probably adjust that before the end of it. And let's just kind of keep working on those walls, try and get as many of them done as you can. The more you get done today, the more we can do. And that's where it gets fun. And I'm just now tracing off. Once you figure out the side you're drawing on, you can get most of your walls all kind of monolithically drawn. So it makes it kind of easy. Keep one finger by your escape key. That's the one that gets you out of a command. So you can do the next command. And so you can keep that kind of going. across there, moving up into the suite. I'm not sure what that wall is. That doesn't belong there. That was a demo. Coming up here into the master suite area, I notice I've got a little bit of an alignment issue here. So I'm gonna fix as I go. Always try and find your mistakes and fix them as you go. Yes. Um, someone just chimed in. Did you have a question? Uh, maybe you can go over to the teacher station and have her unmute and you can ask it there so I can hear you a little bit better. No? Okay, I don't want you to feel like I'm not answering questions. I want to answer your questions. Um, you should have a few at this point, maybe. So I'm just tracing over the walls I did in AutoCAD. And my mouse is super sensitive. Someone has a question. Yes, please. Hey, man. Nice mask. Thanks. So I have to like redo my entire plan in AutoCAD or? No, if you want, you can draw it from scratch here. So you would do it the same way. What I would do personally is I would draw it um, just with the partition wall and you put in, your, say, your 10 feet and set that distance that you want. Make sure your lines are straight, though you don't have the advantage of the F8 key in Revit. So when you're drawing your wall and you start, make sure you follow that blue tracer line. You can type in your value that you need. Now, the difference is, is 10 feet is 10 feet, so 10 works. But if you need to do inches, you have to put the quotes in. But you can draw it straight in Revit if you'd like. All right. Okay. 
and we're, we're going to spend a few days on walls, so you're not going to get too far. You won't get behind. We'll spend some time here. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, so you guys know I should be back first of next week by Monday. My quarantine will end. Um, and to put your minds at ease, I've been tested. I'm negative. No, no, nothing to worry about. Everything's good. So I just want to keep you safe because of where I went. So, all right, we're finishing these walls out. Um, the more, the faster you get, the better, or the more you do, the faster you'll get. And I'd like to say, I will probably change almost every one of these walls before I am done with this house. Um, because as I get working, I'll find that um, something's a better idea. It comes and it's just easier to fix that. All right, so there are all my interior walls, except, um, and I may have stuck on a couple, I need to do my plumbing wall. So I'm gonna give you guys just a minute. We've got until 135, that gives us about an hour. Um, if you guys would like to take a break, um, let's take a break and come back at 1240. So if you need to go use the restroom, get a drink of water, but let's um, start at 1240. I'll stick around right here if you need help. Again, you're welcome to come to my desk there and use the mic, or I've got an eye on the chat right now. Garage walls, they're gonna happen this next little bit. So yep, garage walls are next, okay? So gotta do garage walls, that's for sure. Very important walls. So yeah, we'll do garage walls when he ever gets back from break, as well as plumbing walls, okay? So do those two. So this isn't really a question, but the construction terms quiz, the uh -huh. last question on it, question 11. It's blank, I know. Just yes. put down an answer and I'll give it to you. So, okay. Yeah, I forgot to put the question in there. <laughs> Um, okay. And I, I couldn't change it because people were already in there. So I'll just go through and adjust yeah. your scores on that one. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was fine the first time because I got it right and then I selected the same one. Yeah, and that. that's wrong. Right. Yeah, the, it, randomly, it randomly chooses. So you take it again and the one you got wrong will be right. So yeah. I, I, I've taken it, I took it out of the master. I just, I can't change it while you guys are in there. Okay. Sorry about that. And if you guys find errors, um, will you just send me an email? It's a lot quicker if you send me an email and tell me where it's at, then I can fix them really quick. Um, I get a lot of um, messages that say, a student trying to access unpublished stuff. Um, that's to keep the workload down a little bit. So um, the, the Canvas courses are set for if we have to go completely online for everybody, but um, we're not gonna do as much of that if we don't have to if we can do it live, we can cover more by doing the project, so. Okay. An unpublished module and is not available yet, but it's marked okay. as a zero on Canvas. Okay, I will, don't do it and I'll fix it. Let's do okay. that. Okay, so it, and that was on the Revit interface. Uh, yeah, Revit software interface course. And that's in, is that, are you in architecture two or three? I'm in architecture two. Okay, um, just don't do that quiz and I'll adjust that. Um, a lot of that we're going over today with going through the icons and stuff. So I will gift those points. Okay. Also, so I'm doing fine on the construction terms thing, and I'm going to get 100% on this last one. But did we learn this in class, and I somehow just missed all of it? Because I no. don't remember learning any of it. If you go to the page just before that one, there is a Quizlet that goes through each of the terms and flashcards. And, and most of you guys are skipping those. You're just going right to the assignments and not the material. So there's not a book for the class. So Canvas is your book, and that's where you find those things. Yeah, okay. I know. 
I know. It's every teacher's dream that a kid will just read everything, but I should just stop. That wasn't too bad, though. Yeah. A pretty yeah. good score just starting off from the stuff I learned last year. Yeah, yeah. It should be, be build up, but yeah. So, and I don't, I don't know exactly what all he covered last year, so I'm trying to fill in gaps as well. So. I couldn't tell you either. I barely passed. <laughs> well, you'll pass really good this year. Hopefully. Are you doing college credit? I was planning on it, yeah. Okay. And so my you... mom was telling me I should ask you about that because uh -huh. I took architecture last year. Uh huh. So. What yeah. the college will do is they'll know that you have to take these in sequence. And so even though you didn't take the college one, they'll still give you these, these credits. Um, what you might have to do is like do a summer block and take the first class. So you have them for graduation. Or you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's usually what they'll have you do. So, it happens quite often, actually. But a student will decide not to do college credit, then the second year they will. Um, it just means you'll have to go back and, and pick it up. Okay. And if you have a good enough drawing portfolio, if you get your drawings all done right, um, I know the professor at Weber State will often waive off the check to take it again. He'll just grant you the, that you've accomplished that credit. You won't get a GPA point for it, but you want to take the class. Okay. I shouldn't have any issues this year because my biggest issue last year is if I made a mistake, I would go and try and fix it. And then when I looked up, he would be multiple steps ahead, but I wouldn't say anything. Yeah. And I stayed after school a lot and I always went there during lunch, but I still just barely yeah. fail. I'll try and go a little bit more methodical so that doesn't happen. Um, I like I like everybody to have a winning source, so yeah. Though where you're recording it, either way, that shouldn't be an issue because I can just go over it after class. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'll, I'll always record everything. Okay, in Architecture 1, I gave you guys the option. You can do the Project 1 house or you can pick from any of them in the house plan ideas. You don't have to use them from the 161 plans. You can use any of those in there, but make sure the house you select is of a size that you feel you can do. So, I mean, there's, there's houses in there that are almost 4,000 square feet. I would not recommend that. You wanna stay below the 2,000 square foot size uh, if you're in architecture one, so you know you can finish it. So, th so Thesher, I'd, I'd probably, the Project One House is a good house. Um, it's an easy one, it's pretty quick and fast. And so if you're worried about, you know, how you work, then keep it, keep it simple. Um, Rebecca asked, do we worry about the walls that have staircases? Put the walls in, but don't worry about the staircase. Those walls will have to be adjusted when we do the stairs. That's just, that's an always, they're never exactly right. Um, because we'll find that we want a little bit more room or a little less room than we need. So we always adjust the walls after the stairs go in and we'll, we'll do stairs after we get the second floor and basement done. So they go in kind of late in the game. Stairs are kind of late, so. All right, it looks like we, hopefully everybody's getting back from break and we can get going to the next part of this. Okay. And uh, can someone in the class let me know if everybody's back? That's the one thing I can't get is a camera to see all of you guys or webcams for all your computers. That would make it so much easier. But... Everybody back from break now? Okay, here we go. Last run, here we'll get these walls done and that will give us Thursday for uh, doors and windows. And depending how fast that goes, we'll see where we're at. All right, so I've left um, a wall over here off. I'm not doing these columns yet because I wanna do something a little fancier with those in this house. Um, I've got a plumbing wall over here where I've got um, right in this area where there's a a toilet room, a water closet room that I need to do. Um, and that's not even drawn 
at all. So I need to put that in. Okay, and I've got my garage walls. So let's start uh, by building our garage wall. Um, for the commercial group, if you've got a room that you're separating tenants from, so I mean you've got a lease space and maybe they're doing um, uh, street tacos and then room next to it is doing um, cell phone repair, you want a wall barrier between those. Your barrier between those walls will be done the same way as our garage walls. Now there's two garage walls that are happening here. There's the wall that's between the garage and the house. And then there is the garage walls that match the exterior of the house. Okay, so let's do the garage first because it's kind of neat. So you would use the same wall all the way around these that you have already done on the perimeter of your house. What I don't want is I don't want brick inside of my garage. That's really expensive and kind of a waste. So I need to make a new wall for this. I'm gonna go into my walls. I'm gonna look and see what's in my library to begin with. And I'm looking for um, a six and a half partition will work um, pretty well. And so I'm gonna start with that. It's actually not quite right. So when I select on that and hit edit type, this one I will duplicate, okay? So I'm gonna change out the word partition um, and then put in um, separation wall. So just separation. So for the commercial guys, this is separating one lease space from another for residential separating is the garage from the house okay so that's why i'm going to call it separation wall now i need to go and look at my my structure and i've got to decide what's interior and what's exterior and this one gets really important okay so if i'm not heating my garage or air conditioning my garage then i need that will be the exterior side commercial students, architecture three students, yours is the same on both sides, okay? Doesn't matter. What I need to change is that the gypsum board on the exterior side needs to be 5 eighths. And on the interior, it's half inch. So if I'm doing this firewall between my garage and my house, the 5 eighths gypsum board goes on the garage side. And it's gonna be kind of tricky to see that in your plan, but you have to kind of watch for that and we'll see if we can get that to work out right. So that sets my garage wall, okay? So I took it from that six and a half uh, partition and I changed it to a six and a half separation because we use the partition wall in other places, but this is specifically for the garage. And we, any questions on that? Okay, so yeah, if you don't have a garage, um, yay you, you're welcome to design one of your own. Um, are you, Will, are you in Architecture One? If you, okay, yeah, you, if that you're fine then. You, the garage is just a bonus. You will have a, a drive up on the site plan, and if you decide to put a canopy over that, that's up to you, but it's not required for Architecture One. Cool, huh? Everybody's going, what? We're doing a garage? Well, yeah, so you do extra work, big deal. All right, once you get that five eighths and half inch set, hit okay, and then hit okay again. And it should say now in your um, properties box that you have the separation wall current. And I'm just gonna go, if I draw it from this inside, I've already got a wall there so I'm just going to draw one so you can see it. And what I want you to look at is where my cursor is. See that blue dotted line and where my plus is? That's the exterior, okay? That is the exterior. So that would be what you trace around your interior. But I'm going to draw that wall and I'm just going to let it sit there. It's nowhere near where it needs to be. But this bottom is my exterior line. If you went ahead and went around your whole perimeter, cool. 
great. I'm going to change that now. Okay. And you can change any wall this way. It makes it easy. Up here in my, I'm in my modify ribbon right now. This little paintbrush next to a calculator is a match properties. I'm going to select that. I'm going to select the wall I just drew. And then I move that properties to my other walls. And just going to change them out so that they are now a two by six separation wall. And then zoom up on it. And I'm going to change my um, object to fine. And so I can see that. Still don't see a lot of lines there. And I'm okay with that. I should, but I'm not sure why I'm not. Let's go here and go. Sometimes if your computer isn't res res resolution isn't showing, just run through them all and they might show up for you. I want to make sure I've got that in the right direction. That looks like it's good. Okay. Okay, so I just switch those out. Now, really the difference between inside and outside, you'll never see it on a printed drawing ever, but you'll want to pay attention to that as we go a little bit. This one I'm going to delete now. And I'm going to now take that same wall. I'm not changing walls. I'm going to finish out my um, perimeter of my garage. So I'm drawing along the exterior because that's how I've set my walls to draw. And I'm just going to trace off with that partition. It's not the correct wall, but I'm going to make you see it. And I've got a gap there. These didn't line up, so I've definitely got to fix this. But before I do that, I'm going to use my properties match. I'm going to take the extra wall of the house and match that to the garage. And things are going to shift a little bit. I don't have a wall there. How did I miss a wall? Missed an entire wall. And I'm just going to click along. I missed two walls. Dang. Not very good, teacher. So I got to add in these walls that I missed and I'll go up and clean them up. Now, when I trace off the exterior, one thing you should notice is by doing that, you're losing square footage because the building's moving inside. And that's, that's not what you want. But it gives you an excuse to edit. And that's what I want. I want you to be able to edit your walls um, so that you can fix things. And so that's what I'm going through and just put them in the wrong wall then changing it out. And now I gotta go through and fix everything. Because my walls that I drew in AutoCAD are based on the inside dimensions, not the outside dimensions. So if I use my align tool, I pick what I want it to line up with. That's a lot easier to do extra walls that way. And I can do this one the same with the interior. Always make sure interior walls are flush, nice and easy. Now I've got a gap right here and you can't see the gap if I turn it down to really coarse. And if I were to change my line weights to thin and my view, that's under view, thin lines, I can see I've got a gap there. So in your view, you got thin lines right here. You can think thin, makes it tricky. If I go now and put on my fine line, it's a little easier to see in thin lines, not so easy for you to see on a screen. These don't match. Well, the easy way to fix that is the, with the fillet tool. And that's this guy right here, wall join. And I want to zoom out a little bit so I can get the walls. Question, I thought I heard. Sorry, wrong join. This join, trim corner, here to here. They look a lot alike, but this is if you have overlapping walls. So this is the one I want to use. Now this front does not match at all. Um, and I can't see the red lines below of what my AutoCAD was. So easiest thing is to start with one. I mean, choose modify, select a wall. You can use your arrow keys to move a wall. And so I'm just gonna pull that forward so I can see where I need to go. And because I know that this line represents the edge of the, gypsum board. 
and I'm in thin line, fine detail. If I use my align tool, one line to that line, I get a perfect alignment there. And now I can do the same over here. I can use that line for this wall since they line up. And then go back to modify and then pull this line. Oops, sorry about that. And then move it to the right because I can see that red line as I move. And then I use the align tool. So if you have your thin lines on, you get a lot more detail. It just doesn't pop as much for you. But I, I want you to go through the process of modifying walls. Um, really important aspect of using Revit is to get in there and fix things to be as exact as you can possibly make them. Okay, so now my garage is happy. It's good, it's great. Now notice when I have a change of wall types, it's gonna leave a line in here. That's good because you know there's different wall types going there. I can also see that this gypsum board is now thicker than this side, so I've known I've drawn it correctly. And those are really good things to know. Okay, so really, really good things to know. And then Will, if you decide to do a garage, like in the middle of next quarter, it, garages are fast. You should be able, garages take literally an hour, maybe two to do, okay? So no worries there. Okay, folks, um, I'll give you a minute here, see if you've got any, um, any questions on the garage. So we had to make a different type of wall to separate the garage from the house. Very, very, very important. I drove by two houses um, over the weekend, um, a few weekends ago actually, because I've been quarantined, a couple weekends ago, both of which um, had garage fires. Um, you really want to make sure you keep your houses that you design as safe as you can. Okay, we good? All right, and then now using that partition wall, now, I have a water closet here and one on this side, and I have this whole wall. Um, I don't need the entire wall to be a two by six, but because of the nature of the, what's going on here, um, that gives me a little more sound buffer between two restrooms, and that's a good thing. There are, there are, we do insulation in our exterior walls, but we can also insulate restrooms for sound and bedrooms for sound. So if you have a someone that has to have it really quiet to sleep, you can put insulation in those walls to keep it quieter for them. Um, so I'm gonna go and put my wall in. I'm gonna have to switch walls. I can't use the separation wall. I'm gonna use the partition wall. Now, um, nice thing is in commercial, it's the same wall. You're still using that one hour wall. And we're gonna run a wall right down along here and this is gonna be to separate, or for plumbing wall. That's me, my plumbing wall now for these two restrooms. And, and I'm running out of walls to do. So I have the master suite over here, or the ensuite, has a water closet area right here. And we're watching the time here. I need to create a little closet right here for that, um, that appliance and I have a plumbing wall behind it. So here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to switch my wall to my um, two by four partition. If I can find my two by four partition went right here. And I'm going to draw that wall. I did not grab that wall. Just a, I want it to be three feet from the inside of the wall that I already have. So I can follow those blue lines and eyeball it. And I'm gonna flip that over so it's correct. Actually, I'm not. I'm gonna draw it wrong. I'm just gonna draw that wall up and then then measure that wall so you can see what I'm doing. If I measure from here to here, I'm two foot seven. So I know I'm a flip away because if I add four and a half inches to that, and then be at three feet. So if I select the wall and use these arrows to flip it over, and then if I look, oh look, my temporary dimensions has me correct, so that's good. But this wall here, the water closet sits here, this right here is where I need my plumbing wall. 
Well, while I've still got my partition wall, I'm gonna go ahead and close this off. I'm just gonna put that in there. And now I've got my closet for my water closet. But this is my problem, okay? So I need you guys to all kind of focus on this. I need to change an existing wall into a different type of wall. And in my modify ribbon, right up underneath the word analyze typically, there's two splits. There's one that split element and one that split with a gap. And I don't like the gap one um, because it ends up being more work for me to use. So I usually typically just use the split and it's easier to fix. So the split literally takes and cuts a wall. Your cursor becomes an X-Acto knife and you can cut it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my little X-Acto knife and I'm gonna bring it down and I'm gonna get really close. So you can see that nice edge line where they cut. And I'm just gonna cut the wall right there. Just make a cut. And if it's a little sloppy, not exact, not a big deal. So now I've got one wall, two wall. They're right there, separate walls. I need the little guy to be exactly the same wall I used over my other bathroom, way over here. I use my match properties. I select the wall that's correct and move it to that guy. And now it's thicker, okay? I do wanna clean up this corner. So I'll use my corner tool and close that off so it's nice and clean. But that's, that's how easy it is to create that. And while I'm checking things out, I don't know, seven feet one, that's crazy. Um, I'm gonna change that just to an even seven feet. It's kind of silly to measure, but um, seven feet still too large for this. Um, but I'll work out when I decide where I want the door to go because this is where the tub is. There's a tub and shower over here. So this wall will move as we go, but that gets all of my interior walls done. Okay, you guys have 34 minutes really, actually you got 36. But I want you guys to work on getting your walls all done. It's a little open lab. If you have questions, I'm gonna move the chat completely where I can see it constantly. And that's gonna be a good thing. Or you can use the mic 